Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we've got quite a large crowd coming in, so we're going to get started here in just a moment. Hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We're so excited to be talking with you, to be virtually seeing you. We continue to look forward to the day when we can actually see you. We can all be in the same place. Um, we're really excited to have all of you with us tonight. We do have a rather large crowd joining us, so we're just going to give it another minute for folks to filter in, and then we will go ahead and get started. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us tonight. As I said, we are so excited to have you with us to start talking about high school placement. This is an exciting moment. We're thrilled that you're all here. Um, we are recording tonight's session, so if you want to view it again or you have a family member who isn't able to make it but is interested, this will be available on our website as a recording. Um, we will be taking questions as we go through the event. There is a Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen, and you can type your questions in those, and we'll be responding to those. If we don't have time to get to your question tonight, we will be following up with you via email. So we're excited to have you, and I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Charlene. Hello and welcome. Good evening, seventh grade families. We are so happy to have you here this evening. I am Charlene Kometz, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce my fabulous and fun and wonderful colleague, Cece McNally. I'm going to give away Ms. Mc a wave, Ms. McNally. <laughs> so um, I, there's, our information is right here. We are currently located in the gatehouse, which um, could be different next year when we actually may have an opportunity to see each other in person. But really what we wanted to talk about tonight is our goal. Our goal for this event, which we are so happy to have, is to provide all families the support you, they need to find the right school for your child. And I wanna talk about tonight's agenda. And as we move along with the agenda, we were going to have the fabulous Jen Brock Going, she is going to have a poll running while we go through the agenda. And one of the things I did want to say is thank you, Jen. Jen is magnificent, and Miss McNally and I could not have this evening without her. Uh, she is terrific, and you'll see her, and she helps support all of our events at Carol. So thank you, Jen, and thank you for running this poll for us. Oh, wow, look at that. So we want to talk about the, oh, look at it's going, look at it go. We want to talk about the main goal of uh, tonight's agenda, which is to support you. And we also want to talk about the timing in the process. So in terms of placement, you know, this is really a year long process with you. There is no rush. We have a combined experience, Ms. McNally and I, of I think 17 years. We know it works and we are here for you. We also wanna share with you, what is our role in supporting you and your family in placement? Uh, we're also going to talk about, well, Ms. McNally's gonna take over at that point. We'll also have some questions where, what are the high school options and, and how, do, how do we come about deciding that? And what are the support models? And then we're going to talk a little bit about giving each child and family what they most need and how do we go about doing that for you? We're going to explain that process in a step-by-step -step and again over the course of the year and it will be a lot of information and don't worry about taking notes. As Jen said, we're going to provide this to you and we're also going to be providing you information over the next couple of months. We're also going to be talking about the public school process 
and then a little bit about some resources. And let's see how we are doing with those results. So Charlene, it looks like about 85% of our participants tonight have already started thinking about high school for their child. And 26% of our participants have been through this with another student already, another child already. Wow. So just to start off, you all um, are ahead of the game. 85% of you have been thinking about this and we want you to know we are here for you. And in terms of having another child having gone through this and having a, a veteran, so to speak, in our audience, we appreciate that because you know what? You are also a fabulous resource. So in addition to Ms. McNally and I, who are a team, you are also part of our team. And you know, something I wanna stress before I move on to the general process is that we are partnering with you. We are an extension of this process. We are gonna be with you along the whole way, 10 months, 10 to 12 months. So let's go forward with the general process. So you've already completed step one of the general process. <laughs> Pat yourselves on the back. Here we are, we're at the high school placement overview meeting. And um, you know, this is the kickoff and, and we're, we are excited to share what this is about as we're about to wrap up this exact process with our current eighth graders. And I will say it's gone, it's gone fabulously. So we're, we're excited to have that, that same journey with you. So as we're going through the process, um, tonight will be the kickoff. Your next step would be submitting the parent questionnaire. And the parent questionnaire, that will be talked about a little bit later. That's something we're going to provide to you, which will be a writable document in an email later on this month. Following your submission of the parent questionnaire, we are going to take your information, which we greatly appreciate, and also your desire of when you might like to have that meeting. So would you like to have that um, a meeting in the spring, this spring, or would you like to have it in the beginning of September? Either way, perfect. So we will then schedule a meeting with you based on what you're interested in. And then following that, we're gonna have the meeting, we're gonna talk about some schools, some different types of schools, private, public, depending on what your needs are, what your family's needs are. And you'll, you'll have an opportunity over the next seven, eight months to be researching those schools. And then you're gonna take it from there and you will be touring, visiting, interviewing, and we're gonna help you through that process, especially with the interviews. Ms. McNally and I love doing mock interviews with students. It's one of our favorite things to do because number one, um, most kids haven't been through this process and the fact that they're able to accomplish this so early in their years is just amazing. And most of the time they are, they are more equipped than we think. <laughs> So following your tours and your visits, we're gonna ask that you refine your school list. And really what this is gonna do is just have a nicer package as you're getting ready to apply to those schools. And when you refine that list, we can sit down and we can talk about that. When you're applying to the schools, this will take place in December and January, about there. And uh, in terms of returning to public, that's a little bit of a different process. Ms. McNally is going to touch upon that and we will help guide you through that and also be a support as well as your teachers in eighth grade. Following the applications, you will at March 10th next year and sometime in between, you'll be receiving some decisions from schools. Yes, public schools, it's a different um, process. Some schools you might find out a little bit earlier and then there are some that are rolling. Following those decisions, you're going to attend school revisit days really important. This is what, again, our eighth graders are about to embark on. And it's it's just a great, great time to take those opportunities and really think about where's my next home following Carol. And then the next one would be to make an informed decision about which school is the best fit for your child. And that really is the general process. And we will be with you the whole step of the way. So the question might be, what is the role of the placement office? How will we support you and your family through this? Well, one of the things we're, we're going to be doing, Cece and I will be doing over the next month, and as we 
um, roll into the spring and receive your parent questionnaires, we're going to be developing a very comprehensive understanding of who your child is. We will meet with teachers. We're going to um, talk to a lot of different people and we're going to do, well, I'm going to talk, there's going to be a lot more information coming forward. So I don't want to veer off of this. We're going to meet with you to discuss the schools to consider. We're also going to coordinate submission of required materials to schools. So we just went through this whole preparation season where we are sending full two years of full academic records, letters of recommendations, including character, English, math, and depending on the school, maybe even a tutor recommendation. These will all go to schools. And I will tell you, we have received such tremendous feedback on how much the schools really appreciate how we compile and we merge that information in that it's so comprehensive. They truly have a wonderful picture of who Carol's students are. And so we'll be doing that for you. And please, we do ask that as you're moving along in the process, and this is something we'll remind you of later, please consult with the placement office prior to assigning those recommendation writers for the applications. Um, CC and I will actually be facilitating all of that for you. So we're gonna take something right off of that list for you. And we're gonna take that, that stressor out of the picture. Uh, but there's always that temptation to write the teacher's names in. So we're gonna help you with that. So if you have any questions, please, please just um, consult with us. And of course, we are going to support that transition to public, whether that be an IEP in your district or a 504. And how else might the placement office be um, supporting you? We're also going to be hosting some events coming up in this fall. And it really is, um, it's just a wonderful season. We have a navigating boarding schools. And many of you are probably sitting in your living rooms or at your kitchen tables, or perhaps you're still at the office and you're thinking, I'm not interested in boarding school right now. That's not something I, I think I want to attend. Well, I encourage you now to keep it in the back of your head and attend if for nothing else, just to hear what some of the schools have in terms of support, because you can use that as a comparison um, if you're not interested in boarding school and you're looking at a day school, also for your public school, what might be helpful for your child. Another uh, event that we love is the parent alumni panel, or sometimes as we call it, the past parent panel. This is an opportunity to hear directly from parents who have been sitting in your exact chair. And they've been through the process. Um, and, and we don't say we want all of the glory days. We want to hear the good and the bad as well. And there's really not a lot of bad. But in terms of what, what was the process like? What do they wish they um, had done different? What advice would they give? And how is their student doing? And we would have a representative from every type of school, whether that be private, public, uh, parochial, et cetera. We're also going to be hosting some placement coffees. These will be determined in the fall. Uh, if you go onto the Carol website, you will actually find our past parent coffees, some that were recorded on there as a reference. And these are specific to Carol families. And we started doing this a few years ago and it's just been a tremendous success with some of the local schools who really just are fans of Carol students and are going to be fans of your, your children. And it's a great opportunity to have almost like that intimate open house with a school where you can ask questions and they're speaking directly to Carol families about support, student life, et cetera. And again, we're gonna send that all to you um, later on in the fall or early in the fall to give you a schedule. Uh, something else we do to support you um, as a family and your student is if necessary or if interested, we will approve SSAT accommodations. This is something that can be found on the um, Carroll website directions and whether your child is taking the SSAT is to be determined and that we will talk about a little bit later in the presentation. And lastly, not lastly, because there's much more, but we will be publishing some monthly placement to-do lists to keep you on track and provide email updates and notices. Um, very helpful to check your Thursday update, um, which uh, Mary McNulty from the Carroll School puts out uh, every Thursday. And it's so wonderful. In addition to, uh, you know, parent information, there's information on events that aren't 
you know, school related with us. There's the upper school. It's just a wealth of information. So we often will, in addition to emails to you, we will post the events in that calendar and highlight them in that Thursday update. And the, oh, look at that. Questions. Do we have some questions, Ms. So McNally? We do have a couple of questions, Charlene. I'll, uh, I'll be the questioner. You be the, <laughs> you give the answers. How's that? Uh, Perfect. Will we tonight give an overview of the Carol 9 program? Yes, actually. It won't be a um, full video presentation, which Kate Collins, our head of the upper school, so kindly did for us in the fall. But um, Ms. McNally is actually going to touch upon what, what a little bit about the Carol upper school and absolutely will be a nice consideration for families. Mm -hmm. uh, do students have to have a new neuropsych before entering this process before entering a new high school? Great question. So the neuropsych question, let me pause and say all families applying to independent schools and uh, going to their di public district will need an updated neuropsych and need to provide that along with their application. I will say it does need to be within three years. So for families that may have just had one done last year, some of you just entered Carol the beginning of this year or even last year, yours might still be current. So it might not be something you need to update. However, we will wanna talk about that in the placement office there is an awful lot of growth that happens in a few years. So it might be something that would be beneficial. So that's something we can talk about. But the, the, the timeline is zero to three years. Rarely does a family submit a three-year-old uh, neuropsych. I would say two to two and a half is probably um, the furthest back. And it, I hope that addressed the question. And maybe one more question. Will there be standardized test prep offered by Carroll School? So we will not be offering standardized test prep. We did not offer it um, this year. And interestingly, and then we'll talk a little bit more about this further in the presentation, uh, very few schools this particular year required the standardized testing. And many of the schools that did require it went test optional. So we can talk about that a little bit later. And I will also add, we will provide some outside resources for families that are interested in having that test prep support. And I, I think it's better to go with the professionals that have been doing that for years. I think that's it for questions. Terrific. I am going to hand over the baton to CC McNally, who's going to take you through um, some really great information. Um, and then we'll circle back on some more questions a little bit later. Thank you. Great. Okay. Yes. So and now we get to talk about what are the high school options. So uh, really quickly, it's public, private day, or parochial day, private day or private boarding, or I meant to say private religious. So your public school is your, um, the, your hometown school in your city or town, your tech school, your voc, Aggie or charter school. Um, our private religious and parochial day schools, there are lots of options in the area. They include St. Joseph Prep, Catholic Memorial, Gann Academy. Uh, private day could include Landmark School, Carroll Upper School, Lawrence Academy and the like, probably a lot of um, names are popping up in your head right now. Private boarding, uh, Proctor Academy, Brewster Academy, Kimball Union are all schools where our kids have um, applied, found success, really done um, beautifully. The public high school option, um, the process for returning to your hometown school varies um, from the independent school applications many families do report a, a different experience than what they may have had um, during their elementary or middle school years. So we encourage you to learn more about your school, about your high school program, and you'll be starting with your middle school. We do a great job uh, talking to the middle schools about the, um, how your child is finding success at school, and it really works beautifully. They're very open, um, it's gone super well. 
uh, for that public high school option, we will provide you with an understanding of your child and what we see as the needs for support and accommodations. We can also participate in um, an IEP meeting. We usually do it by um, conference call or now Zoom or uh, Google Meets. So when we're thinking about the support models for our schools, we throw them into three categories. Um, comprehensive, so Carroll would be a comprehensive school. Integrated, a school you may have heard of that has integrated support would be Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall, which is in Waltham or a minimal support school. And there are a, a wide variety of those. It could be um, Arlington Catholic, um, Lawrence Academy, Beaver Country Day. The comprehensive support schools, um, they provide continued remedial support and they offer um, similar types of support as Carol. They might have uh, reading tutorials, um, a very structured writing program and direct and explicit instruction in all subjects. So your child would receive continued support, um, for example, in um, their expressive language, either oral language or written language, whatever their need is. That's how, as we explore those schools with you, we'll help you understand how that fits in with your child's profile. Uh, Comprehensive schools can modify a curriculum and foreign language waivers are applicable and often available. Uh, examples of these schools are Landmark, Eagle Hill and Foreman School. The so integrated support schools, they, um, they could, it, it can be different. They can provide an academic support class in the student's daily schedule. So it's built in. And that support uh, block will emphasize the skills and um, strategies that your student may need to develop. The school can also provide accommodations, but generally will not um, modify the curriculum. A language waiver is something that you can have a discussion about. Sometimes in an integrated support school, it may be a little bit easier to um, wait to start a foreign language. Um, and see how things are going so that maybe in the first couple of years or at least freshman year you have an extra study block. Uh, so Carroll Upper School, Chapel Hill Chauncey Hall, Proctor Academy, and uh, St. Joseph Preparatory School we consider to be integrated support. Your, uh, our minimal support schools. These are schools that may provide support um, in forms of peer tutoring, and or drop-in learning centers. The accommodations um, can be provided. They're more what we would call a 504 style accommodation, uh, but the curriculum is not modified. So extra time would be available, maybe a calculator on some math assessments. Um, we used to say use of a computer, which you know that's sort of obsolete at this point, but for, um, for all assessments and all writing, um, assignments with uh, spell checks and, and grammar checks built in. Uh, the st your student um, at a minimal support school would be need to be independent in order to uh, manage those check-ins with teachers that are encouraged. A language waiver is not available. Once again, you could maybe um, think about deferring the, the language classes for a year to have that um, extra study block freshman year. It's a nice way to work that in. Beaver Country Day, Brimmer in May, and Thayer Academy, we consider uh, minimal support schools. And then Carroll Upper School. We consider Carroll Upper School to be an integrated support school. And we can also um, meet the, the your students' individual uh, matrix of challenges and uh, strengths. So the, the great thing about the Carroll Upper School is it's a, a lovely, warm, small community with those uh, small classes. Lots of opportunity for your student to, um, to meet with teachers, to um, solidify those skills and strategies for self-advocating, clarifying questions. Um, so there, it is a rigorous high school mainstream curriculum. The, 
you know, geometry or algebra is available, the English literature and composition, the writing is definitely emphasized. Um, the focus block would is dependent, it could be um, a math focus block. Um, and then the Orton Gillingham is available as a tutorial if needed, and that's determined um, based on your child's uh, past performance. So then circling back around to the, our, our public model, our public, our great public schools, um, the public high school support, it really depends on your school and it depends on the district and the availability of the district programming. It can change from year to year. So that's another good reason to get to know your school. What you understood in the past could be very different now. Um, you, the students diagnose uh, learning difference, so connected to your testing. And then what is the strength of that uh, IEP and 504 plan? And how is, that, how is that support going to be delivered? We'll help you support, uh, support you in that process, in that exploration, and help you understand what that different programming looks like and what the day-to-day -day is going to look like for your student in a public high school. So the next, what we really try to do is in order to help you understand what level of support you might be looking at is we help you develop a very deep understanding of your child. We spend a lot of time learning about your child. We connect with their teachers, the counselors, the advisors and coaches. We take a deep dive into that Carol data that is often talked about and we learn from you and your child. We really like to listen. We do a lot of listening. Tonight we're doing a lot of talking, but um, in other meetings, we'll just really be doing a lot of listening. We do want to understand uh, your child's strengths and areas of interest and what the level of support is needed um, at Carroll currently. How independent is your child? How well are they using the skills and strategies that they've been offered? What's their active learning look like? And where are they in um, their confidence and maturity journey? Um, what are their outside interests? Art, sports, um, travel, what are their hopes and dreams? We really wanna get down um, and understand the whole child and the whole family. So- Okay. <laughs> we do have some questions. We have some great questions. As part of the process, uh, Ms. McNally, do you suggest whether a child would need comprehensive, integrated, et cetera? How, how does that, how do you, would you add that in as part of the process? That is the question. Yes, yeah, so at, uh, first we get the parent questionnaire and then we set a meeting. And then um, we would do the deep dive into the Carol data, getting to know your child, um, trying to see if we can sit in on the classes, interviewing the, the teachers. And then starting from there, we would ask you to consider a level of support. We also know that this is very early on in the process it, it, and it's a whole year. And your child has a full year of learning in front of them. Uh, adventures over the summer, maybe summer camp, traveling, a summer job. So your child in November and December could have enormous growth. So we don't want to say only this or only that. So we'll say, here's a level of support. And with what we're seeing, you could also look here. So perhaps a straddling those, um, those levels of support. That's really helpful, uh, Cece. Another great question, what has been the feedback from students entering the public school system? Oh, great. <laughs> we are, well, I have, a, I have a daughter who graduated from Carroll and then um, went to our public high school. She did beautifully. I know many of her friends also went to public school and they did beautifully. Uh, Carol teaches our kids, and this is whether you're in independent or uh, public school, how to know what they need and how to ask for what they need. So that's a, 
a really excellent skill to have and serves them really well in public school. I think it's also important to know that we have, um, living here in the Northeast, we have amazing school systems. So number one and three in the country, I think still here in uh, Massachusetts and for some of our families who live in New Hampshire, um, really amazing. So I have no concerns about the public schools and we can help you understand what your hometown school looks like. Uh, we don't know all of them, but we're happy to, um, help you explore them. We wish we, we could I know. understand all of our amazing public schools, but it's impossible because there's just too many and there's lots of changes, right? Ms. McNally, they're, they're changing what they offer for programming. So it really does fall on the parents, but we're there to listen and guide you through that. Um, and so another great question is what percentage of students stay for ninth grade? And what are some of the schools they might be transitioning to after? You know, it's hard to say because it, it changes every year, but generally it's 30% go um, return to their great hometown school, 30% uh, are at an independent school and 30% um, an independent boarding and 30% um, at a, an independent day school. And then mixed in there are our great uh, Carol kids. And even when, Carol nine kids, and even when our, Carol, our eighth grade students receive an offer from an independent school or uh, they could go to their uh, great public school, they choose to stay with us. So it's hard to say every year. We have a lot of interest again this year in our upper um, program. Mm. So. so I'm gonna take another, or offer you another question and then we can move on, but then we can go back and answer some more questions because I think we're doing terrific on time and, and there seem to be some really great questions coming up. Uh, so how, let's see, what would I, oh, this is a great one. Are vocational schools part of the process like Minuteman? Yes. Right, so that's part of the public process, but then the vocational schools do uh, require an application. Charlene and I are super good at them. We yeah. know how to get that done. It's not uh, arduous and you just wouldn't want to get beyond time with it and uh, enjoy the, the possibilities of um, exploring those uh, voc tech and Aggie schools. They have great informational nights. So you just want to get on, um, get a hold of those calendars, get a hold of those events, but you don't need to worry about that till the fall because they won't be published. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, we will support you through that process too. And they're fabulous choices mm. and really um, amazing choices and amazing college trajectory. Uh, in addition to coming out with um, having a passion and being skilled in it. Um, so I will, if you don't mind, we could go on to the next section actually has a lot of questions and then maybe we can circle back um, on questions that are coming from the audience. Uh, so some frequently asked questions that we had pulled together from years past were which placement professional will I be working with? And I want to reiterate that we are a team, the placement office, <laughs> we are a great team. And we, like I said, we have, um, upwards of 17 years of experience and together, although we're gonna be working with, um, have a designated person be your point person, we really do work together. So I wanna add that in. In terms of um, which one you'll be working with, we are going to, following this evening, we are finalizing some things with our current eighth grade students and we're, we wanna give them that attention. So what we're going to do is uh, provide an email to each of you introducing ourselves as your placement person, placement contact by the last week in March. And what we're going to do with that in addition is to provide you some additional information. So we are giving you a lot tonight and we're gonna add on to that at the end of the month. Um, so I hope that answers that. Another question, do I need to supply information to the placement uh, office prior to our meeting? And yes, we talked about the parent questionnaire, the parent questionnaire and any new testing. So some families, as I said, may have had some new testing done. You may have just entered Carol um, this fall 
or, or even last year and had some new testing done, that is fabulous. And you may have already sent it to Mary Texera, very important name, per, important person to know because other than placement materials, everything goes through Mary Texera. So we'll check with her first, but if you have some new testing, you wanna provide that to us along with your parent questionnaire. When we return, you return the parent questionnaire, there's a little section on it that will um, ask when you'd like to have the meeting. And so that kind of stimulates the, the rest of the process with us as a team partnering. Uh, when should you meet? Again, back to that parent questionnaire, it's really you decide as a family. You, you know, we're not sitting at your kitchen table, although we might like to. And we, we know that for every, some families meeting this spring is opportune. And for others, they have some other things they're navigating and they feel really comfortable having it in September. We had our families this year straddle that five month period and they're all in the same place. They've all finished on time. Everything has gone smoothly. So um, please know that we can do this, whether it's a, a fall meeting or a spring meeting. Okay, and scheduling new testing. That was actually maybe a question that came up too um, that I thought was going to come up in this slide. Um, and you will want to discuss that based on, again, when was your last testing? Is summer testing something your child will be open to? Would they be better at the end of the school year where they've already been used to being in school, writing, reading, taking tests? Or you know what? Maybe you want to have them have that summer of, of growth this end of this year and schedule it early fall. What we will tell you is to maybe not wait until November or December. Because although you are most likely have everything checked off and are ready to go, the neuropsychologists we found this year were really overbooked. Um, and although they're fabulous, the turnaround to have the finalized report was quite lengthy. And we do not want anyone to have that undue stress as you're going into that piece of the application where you're submitting. Um, so a lot more to talk about. I probably offered we a little too much information there, but we can move on to the next slide. Okay, what are the different types of application methods? So it's really important to um, look at the high school websites that, you know, so you, part of the, the parents process when you're looking at some schools is really to go in, what does that admissions portal look like? What I will tell you is each school may offer three different options and you, they may offer a common app they may offer their own portal, and then some are offering a new one. It's not new, but they're adding into one called Gateway. So one of the so you want to see which one is appropriate method um, in the most efficient and effective. What I will tell you is the most common that have been in the past and this year as well are the SAO and Ravenna, and essentially they're both online app application portals where numbers of schools use them. And once you put your information in, it's a lot easier of a process than filling out independent um, school applications. If you're applying to five schools and you have five independent applications, the standard application online allows you to put all that information in once, and then you can add the schools in. So whenever possible, please use Ravenna or the SAO. We just encourage you to do that, but have a discussion with us about it. And we'll, we'll be talking about it um, back at that, uh, in probably later in November when we have that refined list, we can guide you on what would probably be the most efficient way to do that. Um, next question, let's see. Does my child need to take the ISEE or SSAT? So not all schools require the SSAT and we kind of touched upon this a little bit and I think there was another question. Um, so you'll want to check with the schools as time goes on as well as with our office. What I will tell you is the majority of schools have not even posted for next admission season and they won't be doing that for a while. And as I had mentioned earlier, many of the schools that in the past required the SSAT went test optional this year. And a couple had done that the year before. Um, and if if so, they may be staying with that. I wish I had a crystal ball. I know Miss McNally wishes she had the crystal ball where we knew what their plans were. And our frequent discussions, um, they aren't there yet to know what is the best 
way. What I can tell you, they've done a wonderful job um, learning and understanding who our Carroll candidates are without that SSAT in many instances. There are still some schools that require it, and we'll talk about that again as we go along. In terms of the ISEE, and I apologize if I'm speaking quickly right now, um, this is generally for middle school admission and also for our fabulous um, Boston exam schools. So the, I would also add that you most likely won't need to take the ISE unless you're in the Boston area and looking at one of those exam schools. And the majority of people, if required, will take the SSAT. I hope that answers some of the questions that also might have been in there. Let's see, how do I sign up for the SSAT? Directions can be found on the Carroll website um, or at ssat.org. Chances are, if you're a Carroll student, you're also going to want some accommodations and you can choose to use the accommodations or not. So what we would say is check and register through ssat.org, but please go to the Carroll website. There is a wonderful um, list and directions that explains exactly step-by-step step how to request accommodations. And it's a, a tidbit of information that is super important, but it's also highlighted on the website, which is please add Carol as an advisor and score recipient. I am currently listed as the approver for SSAT accommodations and they're very standard, extra time, highlighter, um, calculator, uh, small group setting, anything that is out of the ordinary, you would need to provide um, backing, if you will, through a neuropsych or an IEP. And something, for example, would be if you needed a scribe, if your child needed somebody to write the answers for them. So that is something we can talk about individually in our meetings. Um, but so that's probably more than you needed to know on that. Uh, and who sends the SSAT scores? Uh, the parents, actually, this is part of your application. If you have that, you will actually add the schools. Another tip that both of us would give you is don't feel any need to add the school initially. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to apply to these three schools to require the SSAT as of September. So you're, you're taking the SSAT with the intent of sending them to those schools. Between September and November, you may have decided to add in three other schools that don't require the SSAT. And by the time you refine the list, hmm, that school that required it, maybe I won't be set, you know, applying to that school. I'm glad I have the SAT, but I'm gonna wait and not submit till I know exactly which schools I'm applying to. So my advice, register, have it done, and you can just put us as the score recipient. And then when you're ready to add those schools in at that final step, and that can be done again, December and January. So don't worry about it. And wow, we have a lot of slides on this. <laughs> and uh, more about the SSAT, not necessary. I think I touched upon that, not necessary for all schools. We're still, um, they're still in conversations. Ms. McNally and I are, you know, part of a group where we receive emails and collaboration from the parent company um, daily. And it is just a big discussion right now and they're weighing that. So again, we don't have the answers for you. And the answers really are found on the school websites. And we sometimes find out when you find out. And sometimes there's split decisions on deciding whether they're going to have them or not. In terms of the weight, you know, in the past, some schools that required them who, again, are, are really familiar with our Carroll students and families understand that our application supporting documents are so comprehensive and full of so much information. They carry some weight. However, the whole application is really taken into consideration. What I would say is come the fall, if there's a school that says we require this, they are using that, whether they're using it as a tool for how uh, class placement, they are using it as a tool of measurement. Um, so we can talk more about that individually and look and see what the schools are again in the fall that are requiring it and where, what that might mean in terms of your child's application. And um, 
That's it to be determined. Okay, given all of this, I just feel like I said a lot. <laughs> what are my first moves? Uh, well, we already had the first move. We're here tonight, which is great. You want to bookmark the high school placement office tab on Carol's website, which can be found under student life. Uh, Cece and I wanted to offer that we are in the process of updating some of those pages. So the information is valuable. It is as much up to date as it can be right now. We, however, will be changing some things up um, with this, your new year. Um, it's been an interesting year. So we are um, just wanting to switch things up a little bit. Uh, so please tap, put the tab bookmarked, check back. If you have a question, we are always a resource for you, but that's also a fabulous resource. If you're sitting there at night and you're like, oh, I wonder, you know, what was it again? She said about how to register for that. Okay, let me just go in there and see. Or what are some of the schools kids have gone to? I think I'll look there. So it really is terrific. Um, complete the parent questionnaire. I think we've talked about the parent questionnaire quite a bit. So again, CC and I are going to be adding that to our email to you at the end of the month. We're gonna send it um, in a shared form uh, with the email that you can fill out and send right back to us. In years past, we used to have your student deliver it to our office. It was the best. So we are so sad we can't do that, but we are super excited to receive that information and really get to know from you firsthand about your child. Like what's your view? Because that's going to be our first lens into, and really the most important lens, right? Um, and let's see, and setting up a meeting, we talked about it once we received the questionnaire. Uh, we will be thoughtful and try to honor your requests as much as possible, but please know, um, again, if we are meeting in the spring, that's great. And if we're meeting for the first time in September, but we've corresponded, that's really terrific too. The support's all the same. And uh, trust the process, trust the process. Okay, the keys to success <laughs> is to enjoy the process. You know, um, Cece and I had a list of things um, of different keys, right, Cece, in, or different items, and there were just too many, you know, and I feel like we talked about so many, and the reality is our main goal is to support you, and we want to partner with you, and we want to be able to um, offer you updates on the website. We want to offer communication via email on to-do list. You know, one of the things I don't remember if we talked about, we're going to be offering um, in that email kind of a, an April through June to-do list for you so that you can kind of say, oh, these are some things I can do, even though schools haven't updated their open houses yet, right? Or maybe I'm kind of interested in some of those New Hampshire boarding schools. Maybe I'll take a ride on a Sunday and just drive through those campuses right now, right? So there's those opportunities. Um, and we will, again, between the events we'll be hosting, scheduling the meetings, meeting with your teachers, we are partnering with you. We want you to um, rely on us and also listen to your student and your child. They're amazing. And, and we've just um, loved uh, each year, you know, we, we wrap up this part as we're, we're unfolding, things are really coming together with our current eighth graders and to watch how they've grown in, in the information they share on what they want or what they've changed in their thought process, engage with them in the process. Um, we will try to make it as stress-free as possible for you all. <laughs> and please, Cece, do you wanna to add to that? Yeah, I, I think the, um, this, slide did have a list of things on it and uh, we both agreed it's trusting the process and enjoying the process we will be with you uh, week by week inch by inch and you can go off and have some fun checking out the schools whether it's online or actual visits and enjoy the um the fun and funny things that happen as you walk on that path with your child Sometimes the stories are really fun and really funny, and you're going to learn a lot about each other. So it's nice. So, you know, we do have some time, and it, I'm just going through 
<clears throat> and I think there's some other questions. Let me see. Wanna, um, how about if we just pick a couple of questions about, yeah. I'll, I'll pick one and answer. Okay. So, uh, I think St. Joe's has the Archdiocese report or the SSAT. Do you recommend taking both? So the um, HSPT is the high school placement test and that's for the parochial schools. If you're applying to parochial school or schools, then yes, I would take the HSPT and St. Joe's does offer it and they offer the prep class. A lot of our kids will um, take it right there. A couple of the parochial schools will take the SSAT in lieu of, but you can't, the schools that require the SSAT won't take the HSPT. So this is going to be a, um, a determination in the fall. There's plenty of time and um, our kids tend to do pretty well on the HSPT, so not to worry. Great. Uh, we have a, there's a question on the testing that the public school, asking if the testing that the public school does, is it considered adequate enough for independent school applications or does it need to be a full neuropsych? This can take a long time to book. And you know, my response, and please, please feel free to jump in, Cece, is that many times, a public school district will offer very comprehensive testing. And as long as a whisk is in there, uh, I, it should be um, adequate. I think the question would be, are you, you wanna make sure you're comfortable with the relationship of the people that are testing your child and your student. Um, so I will kind of piggyback and offer some unsolicited, I won't say advice, but just um, a comment that that is something that in the past we've noticed where a student, um, it's really nice for them to meet the people that they may be evaluated by. Um, because if you have a student that maybe has a little anxiety or is shy or, or quiet and suddenly you're in testing and this long testing, which really isn't typically very fun and the results you want them to feel good about it. So whether it's a public or a private neuropsychologist office, you could request that meeting before and just you know gauge that for them. And if for some reason you're sensing, you know what, this might not be the best fit. It would be a good time to either seek elsewhere or even in the public school, just say, you know, I don't know if they're comfortable as there's another um, person that could do the testing. But that's something that's rare, but it's something worth doing. But I think we have plenty of families that are using their public school testing and it's whether you feel comfortable with the testing. And I think, Shirley, sometimes uh, families will uh, work with their public school and have uh, new testing um, conducted with the public school. And then they can also partner with a private practitioner who may add in some separate testing and add into that report. So maybe it's a little bit fuller report. Maybe there's a little more information there to use for public school and or independent school applications. Yeah. So once again, we can talk about that um, and there's no one right, one right answer. The answer that is right is the answer that works for you and your family and your child. We you wanna do a couple more. Um, sure. I I see there's, you know, just going back, there's another question about the success at the technical school. And I will speak to um, some students that I've had over the last few years who have gone to um, vocational technical, technical schools, excuse me, and have been incredibly successful. And a great um, example I just like to add is I have a student who, or I worked with a student, um, so yeah, I'm already so proud, I feel like he's mine. Um, and he had an opportunity to do an internship in France based on his carpentry. And now they're looking at colleges and really he has, you know, the world is his oyster. He took it and just went with it. And um, my experience thus far, and I think Ms. McNally can concur, the, the vocational technical schools they have a matrix to follow. So they accept you, you know, there's a process in going through that. They really want to know that they can also support you. So they also collect a lot of information and we really appreciate that. And we have heard wonderful things in terms of students doing really well um, in that arena. So you yeah. can feel comfortable um, adding that to your list if that's something you're interested in. And, you know, again, every, every um, vocational technical school is different 
Um, so you really, those open houses, just like going to some of the independent schools are really important. Right. So here's a question. Uh, if we were thinking about working with an outside educational consultant, do you continue to play a role with the family and the outside educational consultant? So absolutely. Mm -hmm. So once again, to emphasize, this is about you. This is about you and your child and your journey and finding um, the best great school that uh, works for, for you and your child. So if you would like to introduce us to your educational consultant, absolutely. We will work with them and um, have conversations and we will do the, uh, the paperwork part as well, continue to do that with the recommendations, the academic records. So um, yeah, always love to meet a new friend. That's, that is important. Let's see. Um, I think there was a question about, I'm gonna go back, repeating. And if you're at ninth grade, do they repeat or do they go on to 10th? So the ninth grade programming at Carroll Upper School is your high school ninth grade. It is the first year of high school for your student. So how wonderful you have that great transcript for that ninth grade year in a place where the transition uh, from eighth grade to ninth is seamless. The teachers have the same uh, application portal where they're reading about your student. They have the, the team to team transfer, which again is scheduled. So that those first couple of weeks of school where you might have that, like, let's warm up. It's happening at the Carroll Upper School. Now, all students go for different reasons, but they're going for their ninth grade. So that is really the intended purpose. With that in mind, every year we have the discussion with families who say, you know what? I don't think it's going to hurt to do another year. Maybe we'll contemplate um, going in as a repeat ninth grader, or maybe we'll contemplate that at this school, but we feel a little more comfortable where my son or daughter is for another school. And that's something you can talk about with us, but also um, you can have that discussion with the schools. Like, how does that look for your child? Like wh where might be a better place? Um, and again, because people you, it is a ninth grade year and there's all different reasons people you go to Carroll Upper School ranging from that skill solidification to just another year of growth and maturity and or that opportunity to kind of reach for that school and you want to make sure that writing and that math so that consideration of the repeat it's really a family decision and something you'll want to talk about but most students go in with it's a ninth grade year and you're going to come out in you're gonna have this great ninth grade experience and a lot of skills under your belt. So I hope that's helpful. It's one of those um, situations where it's, again, it's a crystal ball situation. I don't have it. However, we have families that do both. Majority ninth grade going on to 10th, but it's a discussion every year. Mm -hmm. well, here's a question. Not a lot of families experience this, but maybe one a year, one every other year. Uh, we would like to look into out-of-state placement. How do we start researching what is out there for private independent schools? So generally, our, um, our knowledge base is in the New England area. So Rhode Island, Vermont, um, New York, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire. We, that's where our greatest familiarity is with the schools. However, if you are uh, thinking you might be moving to another state across country, uh, we can help you understand what that programming looks like. Sometimes the key to understanding are those um, vocabulary words. What does, what does that word actually mean and where is it located in that description? So we can help you decipher that and we can also talk to a couple of schools if you start to narrow that down um, to get some clarification on their program. So uh, just let us know where you are what you need and um, we will do our best for you. Great, uh, let's see, I have another question about, um, there was a question around deferring admission in terms of say for some boarding schools. Can you, if you are accepted to a school and you maybe wanna do something else for a year, maybe you wanna try your district and you feel confident but you're not 100%, can you defer? 
So I, my answer, and again, Ms. McNally, feel free to jump in, would be you would need to reapply. Um, you know, the beauty, if you were offered an, a, an acceptance uh, by a school is that they found that your son or daughter would be a great fit in their community. And they were excited to have you on campus, your family, your, your child. So in that respect, yes, they will have, they know you, they know they're a fan, right? But you are now going into a new admission season the next year with a new group of students. And one thing we will tell you as, and you can attest to as parents, wow, it's been a different year, right? And so each year is, it has a little different flavor. And so although our process we know is successful, we want you to trust this process. We are here for you. Every year there's something new, right? We're all learning something new, something changes. Um, there were changes this year in what the dynamics of schools look like. So we don't, next year will be a little bit different. So if you defer, that next year might look a little bit different for the applicant pool. Um, so I, I, I would say that a school will say, you know, we are a fan of your child and you would need to reapply. Um, but there's still some good things there because they, they know you and they, yes. they already feel like you'd be a fit in their community. So I hope that that is um, the answer you were looking for, or at least I hope I was able to answer that. <laughs> Here's another great question. How do I, how do we identify non-traditional placement? Um, my child is interested in pursuing their passion, the performing arts. Mm -hmm. Well, we actually are quite familiar with several schools uh, that are particularly um, art focused. One, if not two are um, specifically performing arts schools. In addition, uh, we would love to talk to you about some of the, um, I guess we call them traditional schools that have amazing um, art programs and performing arts included. So uh, this, it, that's going to be a great journey for you because uh, those programs are awesome, completely awesome. And lots of people available at the schools, families, uh, parents, and kids who would like to talk to your child about um, what that looks like? How, how does that play out at, at school? So um, yeah, looking forward to finding out who that is. Yeah, um, and I have another question. If we still have time, I think we still have a little bit of time. If you're willing to hang on with us, <laughs> there's a question about um, whether our office will be honest about high school weaknesses when it comes to student support um, in the concern of maybe, you know, people are, you know, schools are putting their best foot forward, right? You're, you're putting out the marketing material on what you offer. And is it that they're being truthful about what they offer? So what I can tell you um, is that Ms. McNally and I, when we meet with you, we talk about the support that's offered based on your child's needs. We don't really talk about what they're going to tell you they might have that you're thinking they have something different. So I think what the key is to talk about what do they have, right? So you're gonna talk about what do they actually have? We will talk about what we they have, or you know perhaps if they don't have comprehensive support, right? If they don't have a um, learning center, they don't have it, right? So in terms of support, Think about is a school supportive because I'd like to think that all independent schools and all schools are supportive or are they supportive and they have a program to offer that support. What we know, we will absolutely um, tell you what they have. And, and there's still some research on the parents' part to ask those tough questions when you're at those open houses or at those meetings too. It's a great time to, to ask, what does that look like? Um, but we will do our best to share what we know in terms of where we, we see your child's needs in terms of support. Um, and again, if you'd like to add on, CC, please. Yeah, I think, um, I think that the best thing to do is to enjoy the beginning part of it, that sales pitch, because it's a lot of fun. They're, they are absolutely putting their best foot forward. You are going to meet some great uh, people from the admissions office, heads of school, uh, students will be doing student panels. There's a lot to learn. Just enjoy that process as they're wooing you. 
when we're when we have conversations you can be brutally honest with your question and we will with questions and we will be honest with our answers and we will help you break down that sales pitch into okay the, here's the sales pitch and here let's pull out the pieces what does that puzzle actually look like and um how what does it look like compared to you know abc school so then you can start to say i can see how this works i can see how this fits I can see what a day looks like. I can see what a week looks like. I can see what a month looks like for my child and for my family. This application makes sense. And then you're going to have some more time to think about it and to go back to revisit days, have more conversations with us and or with the school. So you don't have to have a definitive answer. Um, and sometimes you just maybe will have a feeling. So that's why I say maybe give over a little bit to the sales pitch because um, you want to honor your your instincts and how does that feel and, and keep an open mind yeah and, and keep an open mind in the process and the, you know this is for everyone um, again going back to that boarding school event that we have where I know you know so many families who you know just that wasn't on their list of thoughts in the beginning and they change. So kind of the same thing when you're going to these open houses and you want to listen to all that great, um, all the great events they're going to talk about and all the things they have to offer and all the um, art shows and the athletic events. I mean, it's all great. And even within that support and um, they do not, schools do not want to bring a student in that isn't going to be successful. So that is never the intent. Uh, for sure. So I think that um, we'll be able to help you with that in where your child is at and um, work on that together if there's questions. Um, so I'll leave it at that. It really is a great process. And I think, mm. I think it'll be good. Let's see another, there are lots of great questions. Um, I think we may have to get a, a a list of questions for later to just address too, <laughs> or I think you oh, here's a good one, and it, it's kind of an easy answer because, and it just shows the richness of our resources and how we um, pull all this together. Do you have a list of schools by type and geography? Yes, we do. <laughs> so we're going to have lots of forms and um, resources available, which might be scary to talk about. Though. Yeah, well, there are a lot, but we have we. We think they're amazing. And uh, by the way, we are always open to suggestions. So if you, uh, any top tips you have, we always take that into account. Uh, you as parents, that's part of that partnership. If you think that um, we should add something in or change something, feel free, let us know. Cause we, we love to hear uh, what you have to say. So yes, the um, absolutely by type and geography, it's gonna make it a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to add one more little tidbit in. I think we're going to wrap it up and also add in that this has been fabulous and we hope that you've enjoyed it as much as Cece and I have enjoyed um, just having this presentation with you tonight. And I want to also say part of our uh, endeavor and work and joy that we find getting to know you and your student is you may and I big may see us at the occasional conference coming up over the next two weeks. <clears throat> so we wanted to let just let you know to not be surprised if one of us pops in. And if one of us is not there, we are also this year eighth grade advisors and we're part of a team. So we have our own um, conferences to attend and a few other things. So we unfortunately cannot make them all and we wish we could, but we are going to try to make as many as possible. And um, that's, so you might see us. And so um, we look forward to that. And I just wanted to add that in. And, and I just wanted to thank you for carving out this time, this precious time with your families this evening to spend with us and getting to know us uh, because we are really looking forward to getting to know you. Yes, yeah, I agree. It's going to be great. All right, here's to a successful placement season. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. And thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Good night.